feel the canola. And there's three water holes still on it. Plus, it looks like Dad had a little fun over there. It's raining like yesterday. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what I've seen it around. That's what I've seen it around already. And have another one over here. It's definitely a lot different than last year where we just blazed through everything. Seen it through, everything was dry. This is a little more like a normal year where we have water holes from snow melt that we can't get through. And typically come June 1st-ish, somewhere in early June, they're dry enough that we can get in there and seed them. So we we'll like to go in and like the wheat fields, go seed wheat in those sloughs if we can, but then we have to leave them and come back and thin them up later in the fall because they'll still be green. So it kind of makes a mess, but if you don't mind jumping around the combine after harvest is over to clean up all those those late spots, it's pretty, it works out all right. So I'm definitely thankful for the moisture we have this year. Uh, that last uh, rain, over an inch of rain, real nice. Sprayer had a little trouble here, right on the edge for me. We'll see if we can make it. Oh, this might be shady here. I'm just gonna lift my mid rows just in case. Switch will lift the discs in the front. Those are my mid row banders. It takes a lot of pull off. Looks like we're gonna make her. Canola probably won't grow there, but at least I didn't have to see her out here. And then we can shut off the differential locks. Check this out. This True Flex canola seed from Cropland, they even put Tony's initials on it for him. Ha! Huh. Seven bags and seven full bags and a ripped open bag of canola and that should be the last of the seed to be delivered to the field so he's getting pretty close to being done with that which would be nice on to the next well that's it for the canola moving go uh, get the fertilizer on the truck cleaned out so we know how much more fossil we need to make that all work out and switch to wheat. I honestly don't know how to go down this hill in a semi empty. Like where do you start slowing down? And, and I've only ever gone down this hill loaded. Hey Jim, let's let's haul this rock pile up this fall. That'd be great. Kind of annoying. to check uh, I don't have the fence to block its monitor so check make sure all my runs are putting down they are well the first few are anyway uh yeah second one of the reasons that we went with these uh, low sidewall tires is just look at the imprint that they leave. Very, very light footprint. Which is good. Stop packing the seeds down and crusting over top of them. So, I'm uh, going to take off, put some barley in the ground. Well, we made. Uh, two rounds so far and uh, thought I'd get out my handy dandy depth finder we'll do a little digging make sure we can find some seeds there's one
Okay. No. Looks good. I highly doubt that I'd catch any of them on camera, but there is a really impressive thunderstorm off to the west. It's putting on quite the lightning chill. Well, their fix worked on the wings, but they did not do these ones or the inner walkings. Outside too, on each side, they've been they're chipped and they chipped right back. I noticed that this one is stuck. And I tried going across washouts trying to put all the weight on this one side so that it would trip back when it came through the washout. That didn't work. So I tried folding up, thinking, oh, maybe when it casters, it would trip back. But that didn't work. Neighbor's bringing some railroad ties over. We're going to put some ties down, pull ahead, and hopefully when that takes the weight, puts all the weight on this one, and then when it comes off the tie, it'll flip back down the way it's supposed to. So we'll see. He'll be here shortly, I believe. I did the trick. I'm gonna keep a railroad tie on the cart from now on. I'm gonna cut some wedges off the end of it and put a 45 degree taper on both ends just in case that happens again because that was a waste of hour. Thank goodness Kevin was close. Just finishing up a half section and it's raining again. What in the world? Well, I'll take the Super V's back to the bin so we can load them in the morning and fill the drill and do it all over again. See you in the morning. Well, yesterday was a really beautiful day. Sunshine, I watched clouds forming. Kind of, I looked at the radar, they were 150 miles away and I watched them build. And then Canada went ahead and dumped its smoke on us. <laughs> about um three quarters of a mile of visibility maybe a mile anyway yeah wind changed about one or one thirty last night and blew this in so i mean we knew it was coming but anyway so i'm gonna go get the b train reloaded and uh put our river bend metal shop screen back to work you can see it's working quite well getting the chunks out that that's what plugs up his towers so it's good to see that stuff out of the way also we're about to empty this bin so that's two of these emptied already Getting pretty close to the finish line on this bin. Uh, 
Morning. Got you something real nice. Yes. A thousand zip ties. We can fix the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, after a 15 minute discussion on who's driving what and how we're getting all the equipment moved to the next field, we're moving to the next field. Currently, Dad's bringing the truck, I'm bringing the tunner, Tim's bringing the avalanche. And they gotta move the tunner to the next field. So Tim has arrived, they bring the super beast back from the bins back to the next field. I gotta see. And then I still need to get the service truck somewhere yet, so I got tools for later if I need them. Is that confusing? Yeah, we're all confused too. Oh, that was a perfect toss. Great way to start the morning. Step it down the right distance. There we go. Yeah, it should be here. Oh, there he comes right now. And I'm gonna grab my walking tandem stuck in pos wrong position device. This is a heck of a tool. Ugh. As you can see, we got the thin wedge and the wide wedge. That's gonna ride right there, the rest of seating. It looks like we're gonna use the block already. Well, let's go grab it. Well, that didn't work. I'm shut my brakes off. Guess I'll do it, but so it's a little taller. We'll try it the taller way now, I guess. Well, they're both on the ground. That was successful. This is the last year, supposedly, I think it's gonna happen, that we have to see around these poles. They hauled all the poles in last fall while we were building that new building. This power line will get moved next to the road so we don't have to farm around it. So I am looking forward to that. It is not fun. So we'll just let the sectional control take care of it when we get around the other side. This power, pole, or power line looks a little older too. We'll see how this works. Pick up my mid-row bander so I'm not shoving those discs sideways when I turn my corner. I think we'll be alright on the power poles, power lines on this pass, but the next one might be low. Well, we'll see. Lots of room here. Now my sections are shut off. Lift. There we go, our co-players are coming up. And we'll keep on seating. Turned a little too sharp. That's my outside bar opener. I must have pushed it backwards in the dirt. So, so we'll clean that out. Soil test, we don't need a fertilizer, but it's in there. We'll run it out 
it's not very much left it's kind of chunky i actually climbed into the tank because it was stuck in the corners just trying to knock it down so get rid of it i will say i really do like these tires this is a really smooth ride puts very little dents in the ground i don't know what you call it. the tire lugs from where it uh the tire lugs don't dig in i guess would be the way to say that um i looked on the headlands where i was and i don't think the tire lugs even leave tracks deeper than the drill rows so they really do a nice job of staying on top um you know the occasional badger hole it's not the hole so much as it is the mound of dirt that the badger puts out that um you feel that bump but the holes themselves just bumped right over them so it's a good ride watch some slip percentages they don't spin anymore they're pretty good i really like them i uh just checking I thought I'd show you. Obviously, I shut my fan down, or when I popped that lid, it just. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're getting pretty low on fertilizer. It's shaking down pretty good. But pop in there a sec. Alright, back in the tractor. Kick my fan back on. Watch my numbers climb back up. Should go to about 6,000. 61. Little RPMs. There you go. I did set up a guidance line just to make it a little bit more efficient. The auto steer button. It's that little black guy right there. Set my speed. And when it's about the fender of the tractor, you put it down where you want it to start. It goes in the ground. Those two beeps means the seat's flowing, but then it requires, I don't know, two or three seconds to get from the meter, which is that little spinny handle that you see right over there. Yeah, that's the meter. It takes about two seconds to get it from there all the way back to the towers and down to the drills. Or drill rows, excuse me. So, anyway, that's how you get an air seater going, I guess. We're all working our way around. It's pretty good near. So the air drill pretty good thing to ever catch you. We're working our way around the outside of the field, finishing it up. I'm going to get to this corner and grab my lunch. It's warming. Let's see how warm it got in a mile and a half. Oh yeah, warmish cheeseburger, and I'll do one-handed. So much better than a cold sandwich. The smoky sunsets. But guess what? We get out pretty quick. 20 acres left on tank two, and it'll be empty. So we'll put in the last fill. So we'll put in the last fill for uh, the wheat over here. We'll have the durum done, the canola done, and the spring wheat done over here. Tim just finished up the hay barley with the little drill. And then we 
go home to do chickpeas, but first, we're gonna see some corn. 40 acres of corn. Still playing around with the corn thing. Not like we're gonna put the whole farm in corn someday, but butcher cows. We'll feed a little corn to the butcher cows. We'll see what we can raise. Hopefully it's more than 70 bushels off of 18 acres that we harvested and the grasshoppers harvested the rest last year. So we will see. We're gonna do it uh, a little different this year. We're gonna go down to the mid-rows with the corn and then come in and land roll it just get it all packed behind the drill. So we'll put fertilizer down uh, the shanks and then every 24 inches we'll have corn planted. That will also work better for the corn pans on the header for the combine because we had a little trouble with uh, 12 inch spacing. We didn't always have the next uh, stock consistently coming in to push in what was on the cutter bar. So I think this will work better just push it in 24 inch be twice as many plants down the row in theory so that should help. Well, that'll be the next video probably. We really need to do something about this building. Our old house, I guess. So that was probably just uptown back in its day. Two story homestead house on concrete. Can't be a homestead house, I guess, but fresh. And the old wood grainer that blew down. Maybe this one. Maybe. If I clean up. So I am filling my seed wheat and I am just watching this number. This is my acres at, at current seeding rate. That's what my acres are until I'm empty. So I want to hit 80 acres. That's all I'm going to fill off of. Done. For the night. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, farm hard, pray harder. We'll see you next video.